in the first part, I was talking to you about the evolution of us. First part, baby, baby princess, teenage princess, teenage princess, adolescent princess. She steps out in the world. She finds somebody. She makes a home. She gets married. She has children. She becomes a queen. Immaterial of whether she was ever treated as a princess or ever treated as a queen. This is who she is. And then she works. She lives for her family. She caretakes. Maybe she goes to work. Maybe she doesn't. Her work is her home. Her children grow up. They're going to go to college. Her husband has been, however, he has been. There comes a point in a woman's life where you recognize that I haven't gotten back as much as I have given. My life has not gone the way I thought it would go. I want something more. I need something more. Over here, she may leave the husband. She may not leave the husband. But at this point, her next phase has begun. Princess, queen, and empress. Perimenopause is that time of transition from queen to empress. You know, in our fairy tales, it was, and they lived happily ever after. Basically, the prince and princess lived happily ever after. King and queen lived happily ever after. Nobody ever speaks about the emperor and empress living happily ever after. Because at the empress level, the empress degree is a solitary one. How many empresses can you think of that were sitting with their emperor? You may think of even emperor. How many emperors can you think of that were sitting with their empress? But king with queen, prince with princess. The transition of this is me, this is my family, this is my community, this is my society, to all of it coming back inward to this solitary journey. And I'm saying solitary as coming from solitude, not lonely, not alone. And wherever you are, maybe you are at princess, maybe you are at queen, maybe you are transitioning into empress, not fully comfortable, still holding on to queen, still holding on to princess because all those dreams also didn't come true. Wherever you are, we could all do with some amount of very young, very spring, very midsummer night magic. On our group and perhaps in your email as well, there were these lists of magical beings. We had the phoenix, we had the dragon, uh, we had the fairy, we had the unicorn, we had the mermaid. And each of these, you would have felt a little called to. Because in in times of change, whether you are at princess, whether you are at queen, whether you know that you've entered empress kingdom, but you've not fully owned the empressness, you're not fully empress yet, wherever you are, PMSing, period cycle, perimenopause, menopause, wherever you are, this amount of magic I saw had just such amazing reactions and results physically, mentally, emotionally. And this magic is twofold. One, what you think you need. I just, what is it? Whatever you were most attracted to. Some of y'all were more attracted to two things. Some of y'all were attracted to one thing. And the other is what these beings are doing for us anyway. When I share with you what a fairy comes for and what fairy magic can do or what dragon magic can do or what a, or what a phoenix is doing and who they are meant for, you will see that there are five kinds of women, five kinds of princesses, five kinds of queens, five kinds of empresses. And now that I've introduced the word empress on Monday, our Facebook group is going to be called Awakening the Empress Within. And again, 
whether you're a princess, whether you're a queen, if you are dealing with PMS, be here. Because the journey to Empress cannot be overnight. Nobody ever ascended the throne without enormous training. Training in education, training in maths, training in archery, training in horse riding, training in sword fighting, training in astronomy, training in sciences, training in what to do when the queen comes over. Knowing what your cutlery is, the training that is required to be an empress begins when you are princess, right? Now, as princess, you don't know this because nobody told you, girl, you're going to be a woman, you're going to be a queen, you're going to be an empress. Nobody told you that that is one of your life paths. And therefore, wherever you are, and perhaps you have already crossed into the Empress Kingdom. The Empress Kingdom is the kingdom where she has things and she is in charge. She is leader, but she knows that I've got to take care of this, 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 this for myself. At the same time, she knows what she can delegate. Because just as we have five kinds of princesses and five kinds of queens and five kinds of empresses, we also have five of, not five, three of their shadows, because there is also the tale of the princess and her maid. And there is the queen and her handmaiden, not to be confused with the handmaid's tale. And there is the empress and the slave. When we do not own up to our crown and our tiara, when we don't keep our heels and standards high, then we fall into this other part. And I guarantee you, if you're dealing with PMS or have dealt with PMS, and you can see how there's a correlation and connection between what was happening in PMS and perimenopause, then that servant, handmaiden, slave, which is a complete rundown of your empressness, which is a complete rundown of your princesshood, it is going to be showing up in your perimenopause for sure. It will guarantee show up in your menopause. Perimenopause scientifically uh, is meant to be for about 10 years. Menopause about five years to sometimes seven years. But I am telling you, my darlings, that Perimenopause need not be more than four to five years. Your menopause need not be more than two to three years, maybe even lesser. But you do not have to spend too much time on this 